It's no secret that the mountain bikes can get expensive, with top-end options sometimes running into five-figure sums for complete builds. But let's take a look into bike industry economics. Can you upgrade a lower-spec bike with the parts found on the top-of-the-line bike for cheaper? Well, we found some examples, did some maths, and now we're gonna run you through the examples and see if we can find out. Before we get started, if you like this sort of content, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's start with using the Orbea Occam as an example. This trail bike starts at £2,599 here in the UK for an aluminium frame with Fox Float Performance Shock, Marzocchi Bomber Z2 Fork, Shimano Dior Drivetrain and Orbea's own brand finishing kit. Significantly cheaper than the top of the line Occam MLTD at £8,399 which is carbon fibre frame with Kashima Fox suspension, XDR drivetrain and carbon wheels and cranks. So can we upgrade the alloy build to the same or similar spec as the M Limited for less money? But bear in mind that you will still be riding the alloy frame and not the OMR carbon frame of the M Limited build. Right, let's go and crunch the numbers. The equivalent fork is a big investment at £1,059 for a Fox 34 float factory Kashima. We're gonna leave the shock as the only difference in the top spec and low spec bikes is the Kashima coating. The shock has the same adjustments and internals. Switching to the top spec carbon cranks will cost £399 over the Orbea branded cranks. And the cost quickly adds up when we look at the rest of the drivetrain. £329.99 for an XDR cassette, £214.99 for an XDR rear mech, £109.99 for the XDR shifter. Adding XDR brakes as well adds £239 per end. The final significant upgrade is the carbon wheel set, coming in at £799 for the front wheel and £849 for the rear, making it the most expensive upgrade. All of that brings the total cost of upgrading the aluminium frame to the equivalent spec as a carbon model to £4,240.95 plus the cost of the low spec bike originally for £2,599 which equals £6,839.95. But bear in mind that this will still have the original Orbea branded finishing kit such as saddle, bars and stem but you might be happy with those. If you wanted to upgrade those parts as well, expect these components to cost around 200 to 300 pounds in total, depending on what you choose. That would make the total at over 7,000 pounds, but again, you're still riding that alloy frame. Is the carbon frame worth the extra 1,400 pounds? Let's take another comparison. Now with the Occam M30, this is the cheapest build with the OMR carbon frame that you get on the M Limited. This is available at £3,999. Upgrading this to the equivalent high spec carbon frame would cost a total £8,239.95 without the finishing kit. Again, you can expect this to cost £200-£300 for that saddle bar and stem, depends on your choices. In the case of this Occam upgrading either an alloy or carbon frame to the equivalent spec as a top range model comes in slightly cheaper than buying the top spec outright, providing you're happy sticking with those own brand finishing kit. If you do want the fancier saddle bars and stem, then you're actually looking at paying about hundred pounds more than buying the bike straight from Orbea. Now let's take a look at a couple of hardtails. The entry-level newt-proof Scout Race coming in at £1,399.99 and the highest spec Scout RS at £2,999.99. Both bikes feature the same aluminium frame. The Scout Race has a RockShox Recon Silver RL fork, newt-proof neutron hubs on WTB rims, Shimano Dior 10-speed drivetrain, Shimano 2 piston brakes, and newt-proof neutron finishing kit. Whilst not as high spec as the Orbea we looked at earlier, the Scout RS features solid componentry from SRAM with a Lyric Select Plus fork, DS Swiss XM1700 wheel set, SRAM GX12 speed drivetrain, SRAM Guide RE brakes, and a new Proof Horizon finishing kit. Both spec bikes feature the same tires, Schwalbe Magic Mary up front, and Nobby Nick in the rear. 
Upgrading the Scout Race to the equivalent spec isn't quite possible due to the fact that the Select Plus fork isn't available in the aftermarket. So the Select RC fork, the total cost of upgrades comes to $2,255.99 for fork, wheel set, drivetrain and brakes. Again, we're excluding the finishing kit as this is personal preference. If you wanted to opt for the top of the range Lyric Ultimate Fork at £1,069, then the total cost of the upgrades would be £2,558.99. Adding the retail cost to the Scout Race, which is £1,399.99, brings the total to £3,655.98 for the Select R Fork, and for the Ultimate, £3,958.98. So, upgrading the Scout Race to RS spec is significantly more expensive than buying the RS outright at £2,999.99. So to summarise, in the cases that we've looked at here, upgrading a lower spec can be slightly cheaper or much more expensive. Manufacturers are able to order components in such large quantities, obviously they get them at a better price, hence often better value at the top end compared to the customer prices. So if you feel like you'll upgrade your bike very soon after buying it, it might be a better idea just to go down the fully custom route and select each part individually, rather than buying a cheap spec bike and replacing parts. But it's worth thinking about the upgrade option. You can sell your old bits as you go, and as long as they aren't too old and tired, then you're likely to get decent money for them if you don't mind the extra work. All right, in conclusion, well, it's, it's hard to completely compare like for like, but if we're getting as near as possible with Orbea, it looks like you'll save about £100 if you buy that bike straight from Orbea rather than upgrading to the same spec. With Newtproof, it goes up to almost £1,000 you'll save if you buy that bike straight from Newtproof. So big savings there. Obviously, um, let us know what you think. Do you try and save the extra money and buy the top spec bike, or do you just use the money you've got, buy the lowest spec one, and then work your way up? Upgrading, because then you've got those extra parts, you can maybe use them for a second bike, or like I mentioned, you could sell those for decent money, um, but a bit of extra work. Let us know what you do in the comments down below, and give us a thumbs up.